So my name is Jane Antoine. I'm team lead for the Suicide Risk Assessment, the State Proofing Project. Um, team members are, are Darcy Bluke, which is sub-team lead, Michelle Hertz-Suter, Les Willicke, uh, Dr. Cami Shikani, and Stephanie Tom. Les sends her regrets. She's in Palm Springs, but I'm not quite sure how regretful she is. <laughs> um, Brett Enns is the, team, is the sponsor. Taylor Bathingway was our Kaizen support. Uh, Trudy Hamilton, Shelley Wilson, Donna Kaminsky were our uh, content experts. So the goal of the project was to meet a provincial mandate to have 100% of patients receive suicide risk assessment screening on admission to the mental health inpatient unit. There are approximately 876 admissions per year, 28 inpatient beds, and 50% are involuntary admission. So the average length of stay for a mental health patient is of approximately 11 days. So our task was to reduce the defect in completion of the suicide tool, uh, the suicide screening tool, and the application of the tool in the mental health unit. So um, as you can see from our fish foam diagram, there was multiple barriers to meeting this goal. Um, it's a busy, stressful area. There's no ownership of the current process, or there was no ownership of the current process. Decreased patient reliability. We were relying on assumptions and there was uncertainty of how to use the screening tool or even the difference between what the screening tool was versus an assessment tool. There was no follow-up, no audits, um, no standard work, lack of training. The patient info was in three different areas, no adequate forms, no visual cues. So um, this what led to the suicide screen being missed and putting our patient at risk. Thank you. So the uh, free project value stream uh, map, you can see uh, patients uh, coming in from either the emergency department or maybe a private uh, physician referral. When, when they reach the mental health in, in uh, patient unit, uh, there's an intake process, and that is where the, uh, I guess, the, the uh, two-point questionnaire uh, screen would, would occur. The, um, and, and the screen would, would essentially be a yes or no uh, answer to two questions regarding suicide risk. Uh, there was a, a variation amongst this. We, we found in that, or it, the process should be that if a person is flagged as having high risk indicators, they should move on from uh, having been screening to having a, an, an assessment. And if they had no uh, no risk indicators, they could move right on to treatment. There was no formal reassessment throughout the course of treatment. It was an informal, continual uh, reassessment that was done up until the point of discharge. Uh, you can advance that slide. So in this process, the variation uh, occurred amongst the people doing the intake screening in that sometimes a patient would show risk indicators, but they would not be screened, or they would not receive an assessment. And even in cases where the patient would say, no, there's no, no risk, uh, an individual uh, person screening on intake might say, no, I don't trust that answer, and they would do an assessment anyway. So the, there was variation in both directions. Uh, there was variation in uh, so how this assess this uh, initial intake uh, questionnaire tool was being uh, applied. There were varying levels of staff experience, uh, no standard work, lack of standardized procedures and protocols for assessing, and uh, following up uh, people who were assessed. Uh, our initial mistake proofing level was one, and if you just advance uh, a couple of slides, one more. Uh, sorry, these are out of place. One more. You'll see that six out of our, our initial uh, audit showed that uh, six out of ten people who did show high risk I indications for uh, who should have received assessment did not, and that was done on a chart audit pre uh, pre project. And so that that is what brought us to the sixty percent defect rate in uh, people not receiving the assessment who should have. Uh, our, just go back a couple of slides. Yeah. So our post project uh, uh, mistake proof level is four, which you see uh, you see uh, visual cues and, and uh, checks being in place. Out of a total of 132 uh, new admissions, and those are all new admissions within the uh, the period of the project, 
uh, the number of defects was five, uh, or four percent defect rate, leading to a percent improvement at 93 percent. So that's quite a drastic improvement pre-project of having no uh, consistent methodology of screening and assessing clients, and or standard work to the post-project of, of having, uh, having all of those pieces in place. Just a, uh, and again, uh, the PQA data summary, is uh, I've got one back. Is a, an average of uh, 876 admissions. We, uh, we have is part of our context uh, that out of the number of critical incidents that we dealt involving either successful or, or unsuccessful attempted suicides, uh, two of the uh, of those four uh, critical incidents involved people on the uh, inpatient unit who had either been recently discharged or, or who were on leave. All right. My name is Michelle Herb Suter, and I'll be reporting for myself and for Lestia Baliki. So, when we did a preliminary tour of the unit and an audit of the charts, we noticed that um, different pieces of patient information was kept in different areas. So, we had um, the medication record, which was per physician, kept in one binder, we had the uh, patient's file kept um, in another spot, and then yet in another spot, pieces of that patient file um, daily would be removed and placed into another binder which was more nurse specific. So we had the idea of amalgamating the charts, <coughs> um, that there would still be a medication binder, and then the uh, nurse's binder in the main chart would be amalgamated in order to increase consistency of care, that all information would be in one place, easy to find, decrease errors, and um, easier to use for all who had to access those charts. Um, the mental health staff ran with this idea and quickly amalgamated the charts and we're really great about um, accepting and adopting that change. Um, the next idea came from the goal, which was 100% of screens being done. So this was the initial admission assessment, uh, previous to what we're using now. And you can kind of see where I've kind of highlighted the area, which was a suicide screen. Right here, that was the entire suicide screen um, prior to this. Uh, and so you can see that it's kind of hidden um, in the assessment. So if you go another page, and I think one more page, um, that's, that's where it was. So out of those three pages, that's where we, you would have to dig to find what the screen was, what their risk was if an assessment was done. So what we were seeing was in looking through those, some screens were done, some were not done at all. Some would say, no, there is no risk, but then we'd flip through and we'd find out they had an assessment anyways. And that was just based on that uh, particular professional's knowledge of that person, prior knowledge of them to say, oh, I kind of know this person, and though they're presenting as no risk now, I'm gonna do an assessment because I know before that they have been. So that led to some inconsistencies into how this tool, particular tool was used. Um, there was an obvious need to separate the screening tool out of the admission assessment, given the importance of, the, um, of this particular assessment. So it was taken out um, luckily for us, at the same time a provincial screening tool was developed or being developed, almost ready to go, and the mental health unit was able to adopt the new tool. <coughs> and um, just ignore my writing up there because this was what was presented to us initially. This is what PA Parkland um, adopted from the province except for the little extra writing. And so we looked at it and it already looked so much better. It was obvious, it was one page, and, and we looked through it and we're like, um, I think there's more we can do, but I'm gonna speak to that in Lesia's part. So this is what it looked like initially, and this is what was being rolled out to the staff. Um, education started, and really Donna and Trudy, they just really ran with it, and it, it happened at a really great rate. It was just amazing how you got everybody educated so quickly. Um, they also had um, an area for the new forms so that it was obvious. When you needed a form, you could find it. Initially, there was um, um, one area with several 
folders that said what the different forms were. We felt the need to um, separate that out a little bit more and have zero defects in using the wrong forms. So the, on the next page, I think you'll see, there's this uh, reassessment guide. So the assessment is done, then there's also the reassessment guide, another page. Um, and this is the initial assessment guide. So they look fairly similar if you were just glancing at them. So on the next page, it shows um, how it was before, and the next page shows that um, the assessment and the reassessment are separated into two different areas so that it's easier to grab grade one. They also, go back once, they also have a and on that says, you know, please don't cop photocopy these sheets because they may be changing. And um, from what they initially rolled out to what they had next, to what they even have now has changed. So there's one person in charge of the changes and replacing those papers so that they remain consistent. You don't end up with files with um, old, old stuff in them. Um, oh, go, just go back once. The, the other thing about these things that you can't see and the new screening tool and the risk assessment, the risk reassessment, is we ask that they be select a certain color so that everything related to suicide is going to be in one color and if you wanted to find it that's the color you look for so they're bright orange you can't miss them so everything in these files is bright orange um, anything related to you'll see in Les's presentation that anything related to suicide aside from forms is also bright orange so I don't know if it'll show up on the screen but we'll point it out so um, staff needed to be able to identify who is at risk so that also prior to that wasn't indicated anywhere right now they have a orange dot on the chart to say you know what this person is at risk and then if you go to the next page from from the idea sheet there's also a whiteboard in the um, bedroom that shows who's at risk when the assessment was done and what level of risk they indicate so so the board is white, but all the level um, magnets are bright orange as well. <coughs> there was no way prior to this to see if an assessment had or had not been done. Um, and, and so that's how we think assessments were getting missed because everyone knows if you're coming into mental health, you may not be in a state right now that the assessment can be done. But then who goes back to find out if it was and how do we know if we've captured their level of risk? So on the whiteboard, um, there's a there's a area that says the screen is pending. So that means any time shift is moved, yeah, Darcy LaHoop needs mm -hmm. a screen. Um, it's on the whiteboard to say that it hasn't been done. If you go back one, we've also tried to indicate that We've also put the orange suicide screen on the front of the chart. We've tacked it onto the front of the chart, so when you're glancing at the charts, you can easily see that there's an orange screen that still needs to be completed. Okay. Um, so the initial screen was rolled out from the province, and then we had a look at it, not that the notes were on that other slide, but uh, too much ambiguity and inconsistency in the answering. So. It, um, before there was just a line, there was a question and a line, and there might have been a zero with the line through it. So does that mean didn't answer? Does that mean there was no risk? We weren't sure. So we wanted something that was more at a glance. You could see the yeses and nos, and then make a comment on why it's a yes, or even if why it's a no. So the screen um, coming up changed to this. And I think as soon as we had the idea, it seemed like you guys changed it. Okay. And then the standard work was developed and put on an algorithm. And that's just a summary of it. And the multi-skill training list, this is just page one, but it was um, was completed. So there's several pages of this uh, just to indicate that. And next. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Kami Chakani. And uh, with the rest of the team, I'm just going to give you a summary of uh, what our successes were with this um, mistake proofing project. As you can see, um, initially when we started, the number of screens not completed as a percentage of the number of screens. Initially our baseline was at 24%. Our target was to bring it down to 0%. And by 90 <coughs> days we were down to 6%, which is really great. Um, we are waiting for the 180 days to get our finals. With regards to the numbers of suicide assessments, 
that w had not been done, that was at 60%. And by 90 days, we were down at 6%. Um, from 60% down to 6% is really great. And in 180 days, hopefully, we should be down at zero uh, or close to zero as possible. And lastly, um, where there were um, no visual controls in place, um, unfortunately, it was at 100%. We wanted to bring it down to 0%. And what we have achieved is actually 100%. And in other words, we have brought it down to whereby the other visual controls are there. Um, when we looked at the, <coughs> at the, um, at the <coughs> starburst, which were there, there were four of them that were really crucial that we felt um, really were going to have a big impact. And um, these may sound small, but they do have a really significant impact. One was initially um, where the initial assessments were being hidden. And of course, that, that is frustrating. It is a waste of time. Um, and also when there were no visual um, cues to indicate if the assessment was done, those two not being there, that we've gotten rid of and has therefore given them more time. Likewise, we've also seen where, their, um, um, where the patient binders were being, um, not being indicated. So there was no indication on the patient binder <coughs> that we are able to, um, uh, on the patient binder that the suicide risk assessment has been done. And lastly, was that um, uh, currently that they're doing the suicide risk assessments on the patients as well as their, their reassessments. It's just the uh, data demonstrating. Oh. That's all. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and so the, here we can just see that the data, how, how we have gone down. So this just shows how. Um, the, the percentage of screens that were incomplete has gone from what was our baseline down to here where it is just below 10%. Um, likewise on here also our rate of completion as I did explain. Hi, my name is Stephanie Toms. Good morning. And I just want to quickly thank the Prince Albert um, Parkland Health Region for allowing me to tag along on the North American tour and this project. Uh, what you're looking at here is the newspaper, and just to highlight, there's just a few outstanding things that need to be um, closed out. It's just in regards to training with some standard work. Next slide. So uh, our summary, um, I guess highlights were we, we implemented the new screening tool. So we, as, as, you, as, as you saw, we think it's uh, much more effective. Uh, implemented the use of visual cues, and you couldn't see that in the slides, but the bright orange is very effective. It's very easy to see, and everybody now knows to relate that to suicide. Uh, the centralization and organization of all the patient information into one chart, I think, was really, really uh, key to, to helping um, decrease defects as well. Um, having all the information in one spot is so much more um, better for our patients and for our staff as well. There's work standards in place, and we'll hope that that will help ensure the sustainability of, this, of the changes that we've made. And as you've heard already, we uh, reached a defect rate of 6% in 90 days and hopefully we will get to zero in the 180. So a uh, huge, huge thank you to Trudy Hamilton and Donna Kaminsky at the back. Without these women, um, this none of this would have happened. They were really the workhorses behind getting all of the training done and working with the staff. The staff on the mental health unit were fabulous. They were quite receptive to change. The psych psychiatrists as well, thank you to them. Um, Brett, thank you, our sponsor on this project. and. Tr um, Taylor B. in the back there as our KPO support person. Thank you.